seen too many people say, man, this is God. And next thing you know, they're bringing me blueprints of a huge building they're going to build. And God didn't even mean that. He was talking about something else. You have to know what God means. It's not enough to hear him. You've got to know what he means. Look at Exodus 18, verse 19. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people, so that you may bring the difficulties to God. Yeah, there's a whole lot said here. What's so powerful about this whole verse to me is that God is appointing people on the face of the earth to give you godly counsel. Not because they have a PhD. Not because they watched 300 hours of Dr. Phil. Or they went to some school. It's in knowing him. He has all the answers. And a lot of times God will give us the answers to problems that we think, well, there's no solution in that answer. But yet if you obey it, it will always work. And I find it interesting that when you stand as one that's going to be a prophetic counselor on behalf of God, first of all, you're accountable to God. You, you have to make sure that you're not going to benefit anything from what's being said. You have to step aside so that there's no, nothing you, that's going to cause you to want to manipulate this person for your own personal gain. That has to be the first and foremost. It's, all you are is an intercessor in between that person and God. In fact, intercession is the birthing place for learning to hear the voice of God. An intercessor really is a more powerful ministry than what we think. We think it's just somebody's going to take all my begging and pleading before God on my behalf. But really an intercessor is one that hears God for you. Hears God for another. And, and that's the first place to begin to become a seer or a prophet is to have a heart to want to pray for the people, to lay down your life for the people, to stand in the gap between them and the problem, to find the answer. There's not a day that goes by that we do not have a call from somebody that's going through something, maybe a lot of times real major, sometimes nothing. I had a call just while Pastor Wes and I were having dinner this evening, and a guy's got a chicken that's sick and it's dying. He wants to help. Now, you might think, well, what's this out all about? It's important to that person. And you can't account it as nothing. You better find God. There's a, and every time someone calls with a problem, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know. And, and even the hardest part for me to have to deal with in the beginning of doing this type of ministry was that when they would call about a financial thing, because I was in banking so long and a bank president and all that, you know, I had to fight all that stuff. I had to, I had to trash my mind of all the things that I had been indoctrinated with because it was only getting in the way. If I tried to use human reasoning, human resources for spiritual problems, it's never going to work. It's like water and oil. It doesn't mix. 